Hello wonderful person and today I'm going to talk about pipelining and a system that doesn't utilize pipelining but before that I want to talk about these three key terms that might help you understand pipelining more. The first one is latency which is the amount of time that it takes when instruction is issued and when it completes. A good example of latency is probably uh, sending computer data to another computer so let's say we have a computer right here. We send data to another computer. Let's say it takes five. These are just examples. So let's say it takes five seconds. Boom, that's your latency. And now throughput is the number of instructions that complete in a span of time. So throughput and bandwidth can go together. So let's say we have a huge cable. Bam. This has a bigger bandwidth than a smaller cable. Well, this is just an example, but it doesn't necessarily mean that. Now, throughput, in this sense, let's say we send packets. These are the complete packets right here. And in the other one, we got we also send packets. No matter what, if they're both operating at their, let's say, maximum potential, this one will have the most throughput and the most bandwidth. And bandwidth also means the amount of data that can be transferred during seconds. So obviously this one is better. But then there are some downsides, like probably latency. Although this one has a greater throughput and bandwidth, it might take longer time to send that data. And although this doesn't have a lower throughput and a lower bandwidth, maybe it only takes five seconds to send that data at a less amount. So now let's go to pipelining. Let's do a car wash system. So let's say I have a car wash, okay? So usually we wash the car right here. Wash my car, then I'm going to dry my car, and then let's say I'm going to have someone vacuum my car. Now in this system, normally, oh okay, I probably spelled vacuum wrong, whatever. So let's say we only have one car that goes through the system one at a time. We're not utilizing pipelining. So we're only, let's say this whole system takes 10 minutes. So in 10 minutes, we finish one car. But now let's use pipelining. So while we have a car being washed, this is essentially what pipelining is. While one car is getting washed, we have another car being dried. And while one car is being dried, we have another car being vacuumed. Vacuumed, whatever. So in this system, without pipelining, we only get one car done every 10 minutes. But in this system, we get three cars done every 10 minutes. And so latency, throughput, and bandwidth have a major impact on a pipeline system because of what their characteristics are, especially in design, such as circuit design. Now I'm going to go to Xilinx and show you Verilog code of a pipeline design and a not pipeline design. All right, so here's an example of code that does not utilize pipeline. As you can see, there are no registers or a clock cycle that will hand down data to a next instruction. So clearly right here, once the inputs A and B are received, we are going to receive the product of A and B on the simulation. So let's move to the simulation. So as you can see in this simulation, once we get input A and B, we get the output. 
And if you can't really read the code on this video, just go in the description and click on the pastebin link or my website to view all of the source code. As you can see, after 10 nanoseconds, I input new values in the test bench. So as you can see over here in the simulation, after 10 nanoseconds, we're getting a new input and a new output. And this does not utilize pipelining because pipelining is essentially taking data and moving it to the next instruction set while new data comes in and goes into that instruction set. But here we're clearly just inputting and outputting after every clock cycle or whatever the delay is defined in the test bench. Now let's go to Verilog code that utilizes pipelining. So in this Verilog code, we have a clock or we set up a flip-flop and at that clock of the positive of the clock as you can see in the always block we are assigning the values that we are receiving into a register so I'm gonna go to the simulation since it's gonna be kind of hard to explain what's happening okay so this is the simulation of that bear log code as you can see for like the first 40 nanoseconds or so the output is ignored there's nothing because the previous register didn't have anything so now after every clock cycle or four clock cycles we are now storing a value in register and that's essentially what pipelining is so since nothing was in that instruction set during that amount of time nothing was outputted and then see as you can see like after 40 nanoseconds we start outputting the data in the registers and it keeps on going so this is an example of a pipelining system so I hope you understand pipelining and every other topic that was discussed in this video and hopefully I'll see you in the next video so until next time have a fantastic day